Hello, Maria here with a new video. I'm gonna make some show you how, how I made some paper dolls and ephemera to put in my art journal. Uh, it's basically doodling, you know, like you do when you are on the phone or just don't know what to paint and draw, you just kind of doodle. So I thought I'd make some cute. Uh, just whimsical paper dolls to use and other other items so I use um, Bombay ink and uh, they are very uh, they are very transparent but you only need a little to um, make it cover a large large uh, area of the paper I use it because it's a little more transparent than acrylic paints. I don't really use uh, use them a lot, and I don't use wa wa watercolor um, paints. But you could use that if you have watercolor paints. That would work really well for this. Or you can use acrylic uh, paints and dilute them if you want it to be transparent. Doesn't have to be. So I just uh, fool around with the, without really any plan, other than I wanted to make a paper doll. So as I look at the ones I had, uh, I use uh, all kinds of markers to finish them after I get the first uh, layer down. Uh, I did some leaves and stuff, so I'm going to show you how I just uh, added some yellow and green, I mean uh, like a greenish blue together to get a green kind of a dirty green maybe, but I like that effect. So then so I made some already to save some time. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple of these things. So I use um, markers like uh, the Sakura Micron pens. They come in six different sizes. I use the uh, acrylic paint markers from Craft Dot. They are permanent markers. Elmer's paint uh, pens, and they are permanent. And then the black. Barber Castell Pit Artist Pens, and I'm using, they are CMI permanent, but I also use, uh, like here, I'm actually using this ballpoint pen. And depends on how big you want uh, the lines to be, that's totally up to your taste. So I'm using watercolor paper and it is a pretty heavy duty, thick paper, but you could use, um, I used it to have a, a sturdy surface, but you could use maybe printing paper or any other paper that you prefer, even junk mail, doodle on top of that. So when you put this in a journal, it would kind of be pretty heavy to use the watercolor paper, but it's whatever your aesthetic mind tells you to do. These, you see these, people are making them all over the place, but it's kind of fun. So I'm just cutting out one side to save some time. And here I just started making marks. I didn't have any plans. You could have used uh, colored pencils, neon, new colors, uh, depending on how, how fine you want the marks to be. And here I'm actually using some uh, acrylic paint 
out of a tube to make the flesh tone. We're not going for perfection. It's just going to be fun. I'm making these. These are funky and fun. You could use, of course, a, a picture out of a, a magazine to use as a as an inspiration, especially for flowers. And here I'm using a Posca pen. I'm outlining everything in a yellow paint pen because when I cut it out, then I get a thin outline of yellow around the figure, and I like that. Could use black or white. I didn't want to have too heavy of a color. The inks, you have to shake them up very well because they they separate and the pigment falls to the bottom if you don't use them a lot. I have a whole tray of uh, Bombay inks, but you can buy them one at a time. I found the FW inks at Hobby Lobby. They were about uh, six bucks each and they last forever. Uh, inks are kind of messy, that's why I don't use them a lot. But I know people that use them all the time. So my suggestion is to use whatever materials that you like and that work well for you. But uh, on stuff like this that you're going to add to other art, you can always experiment, try something different. And if it gets uh, ruined, it's not a big deal learn new techniques, uh, try different colors that you never use. Just have fun with it. That's the point. Here I'm using a Neo color. No, I mean a Posca pen. That is not the permanent marker, but the colors are so pretty. So I went to a Signo Uniball white op opaque pen. I love those when they work correctly, they don't always work very well. I'm always on the lookout for the perfect white marker. And here I'm doing the outline with yellow. and some stripes. Stripes and dots are, I love that. Some more yellow outline. They looks, it looks very pretty when you cut it out if you do have an outline.
so I called her done I'm gonna do uh, also show you one of my flowers I'm using a ballpoint pen I guess a ballpoint pen is really my go-to pen for doodling. It is not permanent and it smears fast with water. So you have to be careful about that. But you can always count on it to make a good line and it doesn't go bad all of a sudden. Only when it's empty, of course, but uh, you can trust it to do a lot of thin lines. Here I went with a lighter green. Contrast is always good, of course. Some people like to make these with just black and white, and that's pretty too. So that's something you can experiment with. And how large do you want to make the embellishments? I'm making them pretty large because uh, well, that's just the way they came out, but uh, it is easier to paint when they are large. And here I actually had a purple ballpoint pen. So I'm changing it up a little bit. You can see that the lines are not as uh, intense as the black ones. And I had a red ballpoint pen. I probably bought like six of them in mixed colors. Those are those kind of gel, uh, gel, ballpoint pens they glide very easily I don't know what the name name is but you can find them at any uh, office supply store or Walmart so there I cut out now you can see I've cut them all out the ones I painted and there's the flower and I, I made uh, painted the other one too and the two greenery pieces I like them the most I think but you can use them for so many things so here I'm going to show you a little bit how to just the idea of putting them inside the journal but it's kind of off camera a little bit so I took a couple of pictures at the end so you could see what it really looked like but there's like so many ways you can use these things and when you have a painted background you can make a story about these women and that's so much fun you know how do they fit in into the pages lots of fun So I'm going to take this and just kind of add, now you can't see this very well, but I, like I said, I took pictures at the end. 
So if you have a green background and you could put more greenery on top and a flower at the bottom, I, and uh, then see which, which ones look good together. It's good to have a lot of fodder because uh, then you have choices. So thank you so much for watching.